Welcome into the Cricket Wireless Fantasy Football Face-Off. I'm Stephanie Thiebaud here with James Adams. We are halfway through the NFL season, so I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the AFC East standings thus far. Let's start with the number one team in the AFC East, who are the Patriots. They've given a lot of credit to the guy who steers the team, quarterback Tom Brady. Yeah, Steph, you're talking about the New England Patriots. Clearly, Tom Brady is the man that makes that team go. From a fantasy perspective, if you have Tom Brady, you don't need me to tell you to play him. He's a great option, week in, week out. If you have Tom Brady, the only thing you really think about is who your backup is. Now that the bye week is done for all of this division, if you've got a good guy behind Tom Brady, try to make a move. That's all I really need to say about Brady. You look at the running back position in New England. Stephen Ridley's had a nice season. He ranks 15th in a PPR situation at the position. A high-end running back, too. The one thing you do keep in mind, Bill Belichick, is a, he's an interesting coach. He likes to keep the information away from the other team, which also keeps it away from fantasy players, and they mix it up. We saw Brandon Bolden have a great game. Hasn't really done anything since. Keep an eye on Woodhead, Bolden, and Shane Vereen as possible handcuffs for Ridley. you got room on your bench. You look at the wide receiver position, Wes Welker got off to a slow start. Wasn't even really a starter in New England in week one. Now he's back to the normal role. Him and Brady get together as often as any quarterback receiver combo do. Welker got hurt in the game in London two weeks ago, but he was on the sideline afterwards, walking on the leg, smiling, joking. Not sure if he could have come back in that game, but with the bye week on, it seems like he should be good to go. Just keep an eye on him as the game comes around. Brandon Lloyd, the other receiver in New England to keep your eye on, he had 69 targets, so you got to love that Tom Brady's paying him attention. But he doesn't catch all those targets. He's got a poor percentage of catches versus targets, but you still have to keep him on your roster. A thing that could help Brandon Lloyd or could hurt him, and you got to wait to see how it plays out, is the reappearance of Aaron Hernandez at tight end. First and foremost, Rob Gronkowski, he's a stud tight end, number one in the league, seven touchdowns, you roll with him. But Aaron Hernandez could also be a big factor in the second half. He's coming off an ankle injury, had a bye week, missed the week in London, so he should be very healthy and a guy who the Patriots were looking to be their top tight end for the season. So clearly a guy, if you can get and put in your lineup towards the second half of the fantasy season, he could pay big dividends. James, following the Patriots in the standings, are the Dolphins coming off a tough loss to those Indianapolis Colts and their rookie quarterback, Andrew Luck? Yeah, you know, the Miami Dolphins have been kind of an up-and-down team this year, and Quarterback Ryan Tannehill has had a nice season, but when you look at him from a fantasy perspective, he's really just a matchup play at best. I mean, he's in, he's in a quarterback two rating. He's not a guy you're going to look to play very often. It's the passing matchups for these teams. They, they, they have some spots, but really Ryan Tannehill's not a guy you're going to roll with very often. And if you have been thus far, you're probably not doing great in fantasy. You look at the running back position. Reggie Bush ranks 14th in a PPR in the running back standings. But what's really impressive about Reggie Bush is his ability to run between the tackles. He was an outside guy, a big play guy, but he's proven to be a tough guy up the middle. And that's made Reggie Bush a viable option to start. I would keep an eye on Daniel Thomas, though. He's getting some more carries in the backfield for the Dolphins. And he's come off a concussion, looks pretty good after missing a week. He's a great guy to handcuff Reggie Bush. Bush has been hurt in the past. Thomas is a guy who can carry the load. So if you've got a spot on your, on your bench, Dan Thomas is a guy you have to put behind Reggie Bush. At the wide receiver position, Brian Hartline. This guy has emerged as a solid wide receiver option. And while he looked to be banged up this weekend, he still put together a solid performance. Devon Bess is another guy you could maybe look to as a wide receiver option there, but he is a matchup play at best. And at the tight end position, Anthony Fasano, you simply can't play him. There's too much depth at the tight end position. He's a guy I will not have on my roster. James landing in third in the standings are the Jets, who are coming back from a bye week and the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. They're also dealing with another di a disastrous situation, their quarterback situation with Sanchez and Tebow. Who will it be? Well, you know what? I'm not sure who it's going to be, and I really don't care because I'm not playing Mark Sanchez. You can't trust him in a quarterback position any time of the year. He's had some decent games where it was worth playing him, but you couldn't predict it. Tim Tebow, maybe he's worth a stash. We've seen him help teams at the end of fantasy seasons before, but Tim Tebow only has three pass attempts so far this year, and it looks like Coach Rex Ryan is being stubborn on this one, not getting Tebow into the mix at all. 
So I really don't think either one of those quarterbacks are an option to play. Maybe you take a flyer on Tebow as a bench guy. At the running back position, you've got Sean Green. He ranks 20th, which puts him in RB2 status, but he's had more bad games than good. He's got several bad matchups coming forward. Sean Green's not a guy I'm trusting. If I'm, if I'm making a depth chart of my own roster, he's got to be at an RB3 position where you need help somewhere along the line. At the wide receiver position, it kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with the quarterback. You can't trust them, so it's hard to trust the wide receivers. Curley's had some nice games, but again, he's just a matchup play at best. And rookie Stephen Hill, he's been very disappointing. I'm not playing either one of those guys. The tight end position, you've got Dustin Keller. He's been decent in the, pa- in the past couple of weeks. The problem is there's some bad matchups coming up for him. He's not a guy I would re- recommend going forward, especially with just the depth at the tight end position. The Bills are dead last in the AFC East standings. They're struggling on both offense and defense, and in Week 9 they failed to ignite any sort of running game. Yeah, you know, you look at the Bills and their running game, you still have C.J. Spiller as a must-start. He does a lot of good things out of the backfield, catching passes, and he's got such big playability. C.J. Spiller will remain a must-start for me. Fred Jackson, however, is a guy I can't recommend playing unless you really have no other options going forward. Tough games. Two more against Miami, a solid run defense. Seattle, St. Louis, and New England, who Fred Jackson only had 8.9 points in a PPR setting. So Fred Jackson's a guy who's really going to be tough to move forward. In fact, if you've got him, maybe you try to deal him through the spiller owner and get a little something in return. At the quarterback position... You've got Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had a couple of great games early. He was in the top five of fantasy quarterbacks to start the year after a couple of games. He's going to become a little bit of a matchup play, too. While he's not a guy I trust, he's got some games, two against Miami. And as you talked about it earlier, Miami gave up 433 yards to, to Andrew Luck this week. So maybe Fitzpatrick is a guy you throw in there. It seems like when he gets going, he scores a ton of touchdowns, but then in other weeks, he doesn't score any. He's a risky play, but maybe he's a lottery ticket in some of those weeks. The wide receiver position, Steve Johnson. This is a guy who emerged as a star as a fantasy receiver a couple of years ago, but right now, he's just simply wide receiver three material. Donald Jones, he's a desperation play. If you've got him on your roster, man, you're probably struggling, and you need to find a way to make your depth a little better. The tight end position, Scott Chandler. This guy was a stud after four weeks. Four touchdowns, one in week one, one in week two, two in week four. Doesn't have any sense. He doesn't put up yardage that you can rely on. So Scott Chandler, again, we talked about it with the other tight ends in this division. There's so much depth throughout the league at that position. If you're rolling with Scott Chandler, it better be one of those games where you expect him to score because otherwise he won't pay off. Those are the current standings for the AFC East going into week 10. You have been watching the Cricket Wireless Fantasy Football Faceoff with Stephanie Theobald and James Adams. You can join us along with Dan Claskins for the Cricket Wireless Fantasy Football Game Day every Sunday morning on Fox Sports 1360 starting at 9 a.m. And for more fantasy football news, like Get Sports Info on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Get Sports Info.